Hi, welcome to the bathtub. This is the old masturbator. People ask you what you're doing in your room, why you're in the office, why you're wearing the headphones, look at your screen. You see, I'm, I'm watching the old masturbator. And he's masturbating very well tonight. Or he's not masturbating very well at all. And you just, that's for them, that's for them to figure out. We are, uh, one of the things we've been doing over the past few years, in order to survive the Trump, Trump administration, really, I realized this uh, just recently. Here's our floral pattern martini glass, just like Raymond, just just like Philip uh, Philip Marlowe uses in the uh, in the Big Sleep. He he always drinks his martinis out of a floral pattern martini glass. I was thinking how how this whole this whole pointless ep exercise and hundreds of hundreds of videos about nothing. I feel like the, the Larry David. <laughs> I always feel like Larry David when I do these. These shows are about nothing. Um, they're just about books I've been reading recently, and, and I have nothing interesting to say about them, except that I enjoyed them. I don't do books on here that I don't enjoy, because there's no real point in reading books you don't enjoy. We've been reading through, a few writers have been reading through kind of from the beginning of their careers through to the end. And that's because, you know, I, I forgot a lot of their books, or I've missed a lot of their books, and I often forget which books I did read of their book, of them and not, and I didn't read. And the, one of the writers I wanted to do, we've talked about a couple times before, is is uh, the great Richard Browdigan. And we have this gigantic, I mean, this is a tome. This is the William Hjortsberg biography, which kind of got pissed on. I bring it out every time. Um, it got kind of pissed on by reviewers, I think. I don't think it was treated very fairly. It's a very odd and brilliant kind of book. And what he does, what Hjortsberg does in this book, is almost takes you through the day-to-day -day life of being Richard Browdigan. I can't. T I can only take it a few hundred pages, maybe every every year or two, because it, it's it's a it's a charming and difficult and sad life. The man was a very uh, came from a really rough childhood, and clearly was a terrible drinker and had a lot of lot of emotional problems. And yet he had a kind of charm about him. This takes you almost through, almost. It sometimes feels like you're going through every single day. And every single time he submits a book to a publisher and it gets rejected, which happens all through his career. Writers, this is a good book for you to read. You getting rejected is like 90% of the job. And he, all the times he was rejected by all these books. Anyway, I'm enjoying it. I read a couple hundred pages every year. And along the way, I've been rereading the Brodigan kind of uh, oeuvre. I don't ever say it, say it, pronounce that word. I can't pronounce that correctly either. The, the entire life work of Richard Brodigan, book by book. One of the things that's interesting is that he wrote his first three novels. We've talked about we talked about the Confederate general from Big Sur, which is my favorite so far, and is sometimes overlooked. And the second one, which was uh, Trout Fishing in America, which sort of made him kind of famous. And the third one was quite successful. It's called it's either called In Watermelon Sugar, which is the short name. The long name is In Watermelon Sugar. The deeds were done and done again as my life is done in watermelon sugar. That's a very good title to think about Brad again. Kind of nonsensical, kind of absurd, very gentle, and kind of lovely. Something kind of gentle about it. Um, I, I, I enjoyed reading this again. It's kind of a fantasy novel it's, or science fiction -y novel about some, some world, some alternate America or alternate world where tigers recently have eaten attacked everybody and ate everybody and then they killed all the tigers and now basically the entire society lives off making things out of watermelon sugar i don't know what that means it's not just whimsical there's a great a lot of sadness and violence in the book particularly from a group of people who reject the society and don't want to be part of this candy this candy colored world and they they kind of are isolated from the world and they're violent against the people in the world. And then the kind of breakdowns of the relationships, which Brodigan often writes about, which is just the kind of, you know, this kind of 60-ish, you know, love and, and love and sex between two people that kind of falls apart. It's a very strange, unusual book. They're done in very short chapters. So each chapter, this is another reason why he's kind of easy to read. Each chapter is like a page. This is the way, this is the original edition of the book. He, one of the things he did with all his books was he always had some girlfriend on the cover and him and some hippie, hippie-ish kind of girl. And, uh, you know, it was part of the charm of his books. Um, but uh, he had lots of relationships, most of which were unhappy. 
and uh, he writes he he has a lot of people commit suicide in his books all through his all through his career there seems to be a lot of suicides in Richard Bradigan. Anyway, he wrote the first three novels. I, I want to say that even the first four novels over a couple of years. And he took a long time getting them published. He just kept sending He wrote, wrote these like in the mid-60s, early, early and mid-60s, and took years finding publishers for them. Ended up with a very small publisher. And then he would go around doing lots of readings and self-promotions. Uh, he, did a, he did something called Please Plant This Book which is a bunch of poems written on seed packets, which he used to sell on the street corners, I guess, in San Francisco. You know, he, he was a little a Whitman-esque character, you know, he, and uh, is often dismissed for being uh, too silly or too slight, and I think that's unfair. Uh, that's why we're kind of reading through Bradigan. There's, there's a lot of, lot of warmth, lots of humor. They will make you laugh out loud, and there's something kind of very melancholy, particularly about this book. So I would I would definitely recommend this. I prefer the ones that are a little more realistic, like uh, Confederate General, and even parts of Trout Fishing, and and as I recall, some particularly some of the later books by Bradigan. But at the same time, I really love his, his or most of his books. I don't think I've read a book of his I didn't didn't like. Um, he sounds like a very he doesn't sound like an incredibly happy man in his life, and and died too young. But at the same time, I did get this, and I've talked about this before, and I wanted, I, one of the things I did realize, I bought the hardcover, the hard copy, because I bought the uh, ebook because it was so big, and I thought the ebook didn't have any photos. They don't really make these things very clear on the ebooks. Anyway, I found out all the photos are on my ebook, so I'm going to get rid of this huge, giant thing that fills up my house, and I read it on, the, I read it on my, uh, my, my Kindle. Sorry, I have a Kindle, but I do. And I read it on that anyway. So every every year or so, or every few months, we'll try to do another Brown again. I'd like to read through his career. I think all of his stuff is is good. I often I'm often surprised by how someone like say Barthelme is treated very seriously, who's who's whimsical and comic in similar ways to Brown again, but he lacks some of that coherence and that sense of a real life. There's something a, a little too clever about Barthelme that doesn't quite please me, and I do feel that almost everything that that Bradigan does reminds me a lot of Bartholomew, that, that playfulness, the playfulness of the language, but it's, it's, it's a little more human and a little less uh, clever. So uh, it, didn't, it, always, it always struck me as a kind of anti-West anti Coast thing, that everyone makes a big deal about Bartholomew and they all make fun of, of, uh, of, of Bradigan. You know, it's very similar to, to Vonnegut. There's a, there's, if you like Vonnegut, you'll probably like him. Um, and he, the other ones, he, he, he's, his style is very similar to Hemingway. I guess he loved Hemingway when he was young. He also reminds me a little bit of the science fiction writer Samuel R. Delaney. And, and Chip Delaney used to write kind of stuff about kids. Most of the characters in uh, Browning are, are young people, or children, or young people who feel lost in an adult world. And that's also in, in a lot of the early Delaney's science fiction. So um, I, I think these are wonderful, wonderful stories still. Uh, you could pass them on, particularly to young, young people who are, who are reading for the first time. But if you remember Browdigan well as a kid, as I do, uh, that's still, it's still good. It's still worth reading, and it's definitely a good time in the bathtub. Okay, Stay safe. We're going to get 2,000 subscribers soon, and amazing things are going to happen. Just amazing things. And if you want to join the, bath, uh, uh, the International Bathing Alliance, you just send me your name and your location and say, tub me up, Master Bather. Tub me up. I'm ready to take the plunge into international bathing. It means you're going to meet bathing people from all over the world, people who have nothing to do but watch stupid videos and read books for no reason whatsoever. So you can be part of that noble alliance, and we'll all, uh, we'll all be, be in the bathtub together. Stay safe.